the human genome requires and expects a high level of physical yes. activity for normal function. Yes. And I think we forget that, that the, the environment in which our genome was shaped was built upon movement. Yes. And so when Absolutely. we fail to move our body, our body deteriorates. If you wanted to give people um, maybe like the top, top five most important things that you can do to improve your heart health, I think you've already mentioned them, but if you wanted to summarize them, like what, what would they be? What would you tell somebody? Okay. Especially actually for folks who may not know, like maybe they kind of look pretty okay from the outside. They feel pretty good. You know, they don't, are not, you know, Okay. presenting with all these let's go through factors. this so number one is let's start with blood pressure do you know your blood pressure mm -hmm. is it 120 over 80 or 115 over 75 that's where we want it if it's not then you can can you have a decision to make do you want to try and make some dietary changes uh -huh. and increase your exercise they're going to be the two biggest levers that you can pull we are definitely going to talk about exercise too and and losing weight. So for every kilogram of weight lost, if you're overweight, if you're mm -hmm. not at your ideal body weight, for every kilogram of weight loss, you'll lower that systolic um, the blood pressure number by about one millimeters of mercury. Mm -hmm. So if you lost, if you needed to lose 10 kilograms and you lost that, it would come down by about 10 millimeters of mercury. Mm -hmm. The dietary changes that I've mentioned, so let's say you shift from a standard way of eating to more of a DASH dietary pattern. Mm -hmm. And a DASH dietary pattern, this has been studied a bunch of times in clinical trials looking at changes on blood pressure. It's a diet where there is an abundance of plant foods, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, whole grains, mm -hmm. legumes, a, a real emphasis on plant protein. And then the meats that are in there are leaner cuts of meats, so not the fatty cuts of meats um, and fatty fish. And when people are eating that way, they tend to get about an 11 millimeter of mercury drop wow. in their in their blood pressure. Um, so I would be looking at modifying the type of diet that you're consuming, more whole plants, uh, the types, if you're eating meat, it's going to be leaner cuts mm -hmm. of, of meat, dialing down, of course, on ultra processed foods. From a, a body weight point of view, trying to get to your ideal body weight. Um, there's a number of different strategies that can help people do that. Things like time restricted eating mm -hmm. can be a tool. Um, there's also uh, different types of dietary restrictions. So low carb, high carb, it doesn't seem to be a winner that's out there. Mm -hmm. We seem to see pretty similar results. So find, find the way of eating that leaves you feeling most satiated. Mm -hmm. Maybe for you it's high fat and for me it's high carb. Mm -hmm. We don't quite know why some people do better on different ones yet um, or counting calories or a combination of those, mm -hmm. right? Ultimately, you're just using those as tools to help you fill up on less calories and lose weight in a way that's as easy as possible for you. Mm -hmm. We want as, as least resistance because then you're most more likely to be able to, to adhere to it. Yeah. Um, so getting to the ideal body weight, eating more of a plant-based diet and then exercise, there's a bunch we could talk about here, but if I was to say just at a, a kind of low hanging fruit, mm -hmm. 150 minutes a week of moderate intensity cardiovascular training, mm -hmm. what does that mean? That's. And this is in line with the exercise recommendations, which less than 30% of adults in this country meet. Mm -hmm. 150 minutes of moderate intensity cardiovascular training per week. That is moderate means when you're exercising, let's say you're on a stationary bike or you're going for a jog, you're puffy, you're sweaty, but you could, you could still speak. Mm -hmm. That's called the talk test. Yep. So if someone called you and you had to, you could have a conversation. But it's very different to just a leisurely walk with the dog. Yeah. You know you're exercising. And that person on the phone would be would be well aware you're exercising. Yeah, like, what are you doing? Are you, are yeah. you walking? Are you walking fast? Are you exactly. walking up a hill? Something like that. But they, 
they'd be happy to have the conversation with you. They're not going to be too annoyed and say, yeah. I can't understand you. Call me back. I've literally done this on runs before yeah. where I've like been on the phone with somebody. I'm like, actually, you're helping me figure out if I'm in the right kind of like yeah. low zone yeah. two and turn right. zone. <laughs> like, so if you want to chat for 15 minutes, we'll talk. <laughs> yeah. So this is, this is exactly what people mean when they say zone two. Mm -hmm. It's this zone where you're, Heart rate is up a bit. You feel a little hot, sweaty, but you can carry out that conversation. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason why 150 minutes is in the recommendations and why that's important is we know that when you're doing that each week, you will dramatically reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease. So there's a recent study, this is 2023, looked at 800,000 US veterans mm -hmm. that had been followed for... Uh, over 10 years, they had varying levels of cardiorespiratory fitness and they were able to categorize them as having sort of low, uh, below average, above average, high, very high, something like that. I can't Did remember. Did they look at VO2 max? Yeah. So they were, they were looking at their, a treadmill test mm -hmm. sort of VO2 max. So lab based yeah. VO2 max. Gen. Right. Okay. And then uh, looking at what's their, in this case, they were looking at um, their risk of dying so total mortality mm -hmm. wasn't specifically cardiovascular mortality but they found that just going from low so basically not doing anything to a moderate level of cardiorespiratory fitness mm -hmm. which could be achieved with 150 minutes of this zone two a week so we're not asking too much they had half the risk of dying that's amazing so you can half your risk of 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 dying from all causes Yep. at least in a 10 year period, follow up period by implementing this 150 minutes a week. So that could be carving out the time to do, let's say two 60 minute sessions on a stationary bike mm -hmm. and one 30 minute session a week. Mm -hmm. I think most people can, can find the time to do that. Yep. You can also multitask too, you know, that's the great thing like, about <laughs> this zone too, is yeah. you could take your you phone calls. Yes. You, you can, you can take the work meetings. Um, you can read, you can listen to a podcast. Yep. That's one nice thing actually about being in this industry is nobody really blinks at you. If you're just puffing mm -hmm. in the middle of a meeting or something like that, it's, it's, yeah. it's more normal. It's more accepted, which mm -hmm. frankly it should be right. We have like forced society to be this weird sedentary, yeah. mm. you know, glob. Um, and so we should also be very encouraging. I think of being able to take work meetings from mm. a walk outside and all that. Yeah. Stuff. There's a guy that I want to interview. Who's like the, the, the greatest of all time in the exercise physiology sort of science community. His name's Frank Booth. Uh huh. He's based here in the States in at Columbia, same university my dad's at. So I've had some conversations with him, but he's famous for saying the human genome requires and expects a high level of physical yes. activity for normal function. Yes. And I think we forget that, that the, the environment in which our genome was shaped was built upon movement. Yes. And so when we fail to move our body, our body deteriorates. 100%. And it's so good for everything, right?